Chairman, um, <clears throat> I want to see if we can find um, some common ground here. Mr. Thibault, I heard you say a little earlier that you support um, diversity as at least one variable to focus on um, to either admit uh, in the uh, service academy, students in the service academies or uh, officers evolving. Is that uh, officer promotion? Is that right? What I said, uh, Mr. Goldman, is that I, I am willing to accept and support diversity as a byproduct of good military policy. It's not something we should, certainly not something we should avoid, but it's not something that the military should cater policies to promote. That do, should do you be think that, do you think that um, diversity of backgrounds is beneficial to the military? As it relates to a person's ability to do a job in the military, yes. If something doesn't, if a capability doesn't exist in the military and we need someone with a more diverse background to do that job, then yes, it's important. But what I don't think that means is that a person's skin color is relevant to those jobs. You know, in the House so Armed Services- I, I hear you, and, and I'm gonna just follow up on that. I mean, because I, I think there's some contextual things that, that we need to talk about here, because you and Mr. Lohmeyer are talking about merit-based, merit-based, and focusing on that. But, you know, when you look at the history of discrimination in the military, what you have to consider is that everybody does not start from the same place. So, Mr. Sedgley's family growing up with a general in the military has advantages uh, in terms of entering the military that someone whose family does not have, would not have. You agree with that, right? Yes. Okay, so if the military was uh, segregated, uh, if um, non-whites and women were not allowed, if, um, if the LGBT community, with, because of don't ask, don't tell, were not allowed, you, you therefore understand how those people from those different groups are not starting at the same place in terms of evaluating, quote, merit-based, right? But, but, Congressman, I think that's a false binary. The choice is not between discriminate against non-whites and, you know, choose anyone I, I'm not. I'm not talking about discriminating. I mean, there's a, there are only a certain number of people that can be admitted to a class, that can be promoted. And if you're basically saying that um, you cannot consider anything else other than what you call pure merit, and there's no definition for pure merit, you are necessarily perpetuating discrimination that has occurred for generations. And when you start to see things such as government reviews, the Air Force independent review that said 40% of, in, in 20 and 21, 40% of black and African American service members indicated a lack of trust in their chain of command to address racism, bias, and unequal opportunities, you are necessarily not acknowledging, not addressing what is a fundamental problem not only for retention but also for promotion. And if women are leaving the service 28% uh, more because of sexist culture, family planning, or sexual assault, that has to be addressed. That you cannot, I, I do not believe you are sitting here and saying that it is okay. You mentioned something about uh, you support training on harassment, um, but if there is implicit or explicit racism or discrimination, you would agree that has no place in the military, right? Of course. Okay, there needs to be training because a lot of people don't know what that means and they often don't know that what they are saying is actually discriminatory. So there needs to actually be training so that everyone from every walk of life in this country can have an opportunity to participate, to represent our country, to be in the military. And the problem that we run into when we try to say purely race-neutral, merit-based, and you know, again, once again, we're obviously talking about a disproportionate number of uh, white people, primarily, who are in positions of authority, who are elevating people, who are admitting people, 
Um, if they are not trying to address some of the historical wrongs to give people who have not had that access to the military, to this opportunity, give them that opportunity, then we are just going to perpetuate the historical discrimination for forever. So I'm not saying merit doesn't matter. I think it absolutely matters. And I certainly understand Mr. Lohmeyer's point that we do not want to put people who are unprepared in bad situations. But to simply say that diversity should have no impact whatsoever on our military will continue to perpetuate a discrimination that is unfortunately embedded in our military's history. And with that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman.